Hey guys, Jack here. Um, this week we're talking about the 1915 silent and black and white film, The Cheat. It is directed by Cecil DeMille, starring Fanny Ward, Jack Dean, and Sisu Hayakawa. Um, the film is about a New York stockbroker who is married to his wife, Fanny Ward, um, while also involving an ivory trader who is played by Hayakawa. So his wife is a bit of a gold digger. She loves money and at the time of the beginning of the movie money is tight in their family. Although they're pretty wealthy and good, well off, um, she doesn't understand that her husband does not have the money to be funding her lifestyle at the moment because he's really waiting on a stock to hit. And during this time, she is just spending, spending, spending. She doesn't know how to stop, and eventually we get this opportunity for her to invest $10,000 of the Red Cross fund into another stock from her husband's co-worker that he claims will definitely hit. He says her husband's wrong and this other stock will hit. So she invests the $10,000, and things go south really quick. Um, the stock does not hit. She's out the $10,000 and she does not know what to do. The family does not have the money at the moment. So she turns to her friend, who is played by Sisu Hayakawa, who is an ivory dealer in New York at the time, and he says, oh, well, you know, let me loan you this money. It's not a big deal. So Ward's character, she accepts the deal, but the thing that she does not realize is that the payment that he wants back is sex. Um, he finds her very sexually attractive. Um, she does flirt with him throughout the movie, but this is leads on to the second half of the movie where there's a bunch of plot twists. Um, her husband goes to jail. So the movie progresses and things don't really go that well for Edith Hardy, who is played by Fanny Ward. Um, she gets into a bunch of trouble with Sisu. And, but other than the storyline, one of the main things that really stood out to me in this film was how racist it was, especially towards uh, Sisu Hayakawa and the Asian culture in the movie. Particularly, we see these racist moments when it comes to Sisu's uh, house workers. You notice that they are all Asian. He doesn't really have anyone else working in his house except for Asian um, house workers. Um, another thing that really continues throughout the whole film is the music. Um, you notice the background music, but when Sisu is on screen, we notice an almost oriental um, tone to the music while he's there. Um, so I also found that very, not disturbing, but you, you really noticed it throughout the whole film. Um, another thing that I did notice too that had to do with the racism within the movie was even just simple things like the lighting, um, I really believe that they didn't put Sisu in a good light. I know he was he was made out to be the bad guy, but even in certain scenes, he was seen in a very dark light. Um, you would see other characters like the Hardys, whenever they were on screen, it was very well lit. Um, but when it came to Sisu's character, he was always in dark settings. Um, as the movie progressed, he just became a darker and darker character, not really smiling as much, but if he did smile, it was more of a schemey smile, and he just really, you always knew something was up, and that really stood out to me because he's the bad guy and he's in the dark, while we have these other white characters that are seen in a certain light. So the last racist thing that I really kind of noticed was this constant um, persona that Sisu was the bad guy the whole time the Asian bad guy he was the antagonist um, he was kind of sneaky in a way throughout the whole film but this really came together when him and Edith Hardy made the deal um, about the payment and particularly he really became set it in stone that he was the bad guy when he branded um, Edith as his own with his ivory branding stick with his uh, symbol on it um, this just really stood out to me that how could any human being do this but being the movie and that he is the bad guy, he was ruthless and sneaky at the same time leading up to that. We get to the end of the movie and we're in the courtroom and Sisu is fighting Edith's husband because he took the fall for Edith after she shot Sisu um, while he tried to technically rape her. and. This is where things get twisted in my mind because while 
Edith's husband is really the hero of the story, I believe. He takes the fall for her. He's just an overall good guy trying to provide for her. Um, at the end of the case, once he has to go to jail, um, she stands up in the courtroom and says, no, 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 look, this is the brand. This is what happened. It was Sisu. Like, I shot him, but he did this to me. It was in self-defense. And after that, we kind of see Sisu, like, get detained. The court case is dropped. And Edith and her husband walk out of the courtroom, and he's a free man. This scene really upset me just because now the ending, the audience is left with, oh my god, that's so brave of her to stand up against this guy in court, and now she's walking out with her husband who's now freed, and she in a light is seen as the heroine in a way because she stood up and said, no, 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 this, 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 what in actuality, it was her fault that they were in this situation, so... Aside from the ending getting me a little bit upset um, just to see her so happy and walk free while she started all of it, I really did enjoy the film. It was one of my first um, silent films that I have seen, and I thought with the uh, quite amount of subtitles, if you would say, the interjections throughout the film, um, I think they did a really good job with it, and overall I really did enjoy it.